Yes, let's get started. All right. Well, hi, welcome everyone, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Um, I'm Christine Botros. I am the Grants and Awards Programs Manager at the Charlotte Street Foundation. Um, so this information session tonight is being recorded um, and it's going to be shared on our website as a resource for anyone else who is wanting to apply for the Rocket Relief Grant. Um, if privacy is important to you um, and you don't want your presence known um, and, and say you have a question, feel free to type your question in the chat box which is located at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can direct the questions to Mason Kilpatrick um, if you don't want everyone to see that you're asking the question and Mason can either answer your question or he can direct the question to myself or to Heather, Adina or Margaret um, and they'll in just introduce themselves shortly. Uh, please uh, also keep in mind that when we are screen sharing that it can be uh, challenging to see the questions coming at us. So Mason will nudge us and let us know if, if, if there is a question that has come away. And feel free to ask questions at any point as well. Um, so this session is for artists who are applying for the Rocket Relief Grant for the very first time. So if you had applied during cycle one, we have a different information session tomorrow um, that's about reviewing your existing application. Um, so today it's just for new applicants. Um, <clears throat> And what we're going to do is we, we will give you an overview of the grant. We'll walk through how to apply uh, on call for entry, uh, also known as CAFE. Um, and we'll answer any questions or concerns that, that you might have about the process. Uh, so firstly, let me introduce our Charlotte Street Rocket Relief Partners, uh, the Spencer Museum of Art and Arts KC. Um, both of whom have generously given uh, financial and administrative support through the cycle that we, we have done. Uh, Heather, would you like to introduce yourself first and, um, and then I'll just call you out, each of you, to introduce. Yes, um, uh, thank you. I, I'm Heather Beffa. I am the Grants Manager at Arts KC Regional Arts Council. Um, uh, we exist to promote, support, and advocate for the arts, and also as a central resource um, for our whole arts community. You can find us at artskc.org. Um, we have another site called artskcgo.com, where you can find events by hundreds of artists and arts organizations around our community throughout the year. Thanks, Heather. Um, so let me introduce our Charlotte Street people that are also here with, with us. Margaret? I'm Margaret Perkins McGinnis with Charlotte Street. Thank you. Uh, Mason, I, do you want to uh, show yourself at all? I know you're in the back there, but just so that people know. Yeah, hey everyone here. This is Mason and Andrew Kilpatrick. I'm the marketing manager with Charlotte Street Foundation. So I'll be the one kind of taking the field texts or questions that you get from the chat and putting them in discussion, so. Um, oh, Sarah Lynn from Spencer Museum of Art. Hi there, I'm Sarah Lynn Reesardi. I'm the director of the Spencer Museum, Lawrence, Kansas. Great, thank you. Um, Elizabeth? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Canost. I'm the director of external affairs at the Spencer Museum of Art. And since Heather shared the Arts KC URL, I'll just share ours, which is spencerart.ku.edu. Thanks. And Adina, um, if you want to introduce yourself and then I'll let you um, talk about how the Spencer's involved and um, how the Rocket Relief Grant was initiated through the Andy Warhol Foundation. Sure, thanks so much, Christine. Uh, my name is Adina Duke. I'm with the Spencer Museum of Art, the art museum on the campus of the University of Kansas. And along with Charlotte Street Foundation, uh, we're one of the original partners in Rocket Grants, um, which uh, has, for the past 10 years, provided project-based grants for artists in an 80-mile radius of Kansas City. So that includes Lawrence and, and Topeka on our end. Um, and uh, really credit goes to the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts, um, who has funded the Rocket Grants program for seeing the need um, to realign those funds for emergency relief right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so I wanna thank them and, and acknowledge them um, and also assure people that Rocket Grants will continue at a future date. Um, so um, want to 
um, reassure people in, in that respect. Um, but also I think it, it sort of propelled us to reach out to new partners. Um, so really thrilled to work with Heather and her colleagues at Arts KC and other funders who um, more than doubled the funding that the Andy Warhol Foundation allowed and is what set us up to do a second cycle here because the need has not gone away. Thanks, Sedina. All right, well, let me get started. I'm going to uh, share my screen. Um, just want to make sure that I have access here. And let me see, where are we? Oh, here we go. Um, okay. So what you're seeing is, okay, can you see the Charlotte Street website? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So you can find uh, all the information about how to apply for cycle two on our website. Um, if you just go straight to the rocket relief fund there at the top tab and apply now. And as you scroll down, um, you'll see the call details. If you click on that, there's a PDF with all the information that you need to know. Um, and then you can click on the apply now online that will take you straight to cafe uh, to fill out the application form. <clears throat> so the main things to know, I guess, is while well, the grant is a, a $1,000 flat stipend, there are no restrictions on uh, what you can use the grant for. For cycle two, we have $50,000. Uh, 10 artists will be selected each week and we anticipate cycle two then running for five weeks. This could be extended if we do get additional funds. Um, uh, so either we extend it or we look at just giving more uh, grants throughout the five week period. Uh, the first draw of applicants will be reviewed on um, September 18th and we will notify th those 10 artists on Friday, September 25th. So if you're applying, try to get your application in before September 18th, before we start reviewing the applications. Uh, the final 10 artists will be announced um, October 25th if we go by the five weeks, which means that the application deadline for the final draw is uh, currently set for October 18th. Now, uh, cycle two, like the first cycle, will use a lottery method and I'll have Margaret explain that to you a little bit later. Uh, you do need to apply through CAFE as we're not in a position to receive um, emailed um, applications or hard copy applications. Uh, so if at any point you do have difficulty with CAFE, please, please just email rocketrelief at charlottestreet.org and one of us will be more than happy to help or you can contact us directly. Uh, so <clears throat> you're eligible for the grant if one you identify as a visual or multidisciplinary artist or as a theatre artist, um, a dancer, a musician or a performative storyteller. And if you go on our website um, or you, you know, look into the call for entry, it goes into a little bit more detail as to what each of those disciplines um, uh, allow in terms of eligibility. So just read that carefully. Um, we ask that you show and demonstrate an active creative practice in the past, in the last two years. Um, you do have to live uh, within 80 miles of the Kansas City metro area. Um, and if you are applying, apply as an individual artist. Um, we found in cycle one that there were situations where we had um, people applying as organizations uh, such as nonprofits or an artist run collective and they're not eligible for the funding as entities uh, however if you're an individual artist and you're associated or affiliated with a particular entity that's totally fine um, even if you are running a nonprofit that's totally fine as long as you are applying as an individual artist because um, we understand that might have been your income and that's where you've lost um, income and, um, and that's affected your ability to, um, you know, to create um, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> if you have already received a Rocket Relief grant, you're no longer eligible. You must be over 21 
you will need to provide a W9, a social security number, or an individual taxpayer identification number. Um, and you cannot be an employee or board member or an immediate family member of uh, the Charlotte Street Foundation, the Spencer Museum of Art or Arts, KC. So that's the eligibility criteria. Uh, any questions about that before I keep going? Okay. All right, so before I get Margaret to sort of talk about um, uh, the decision-making process and the weighting system that's used, I just wanna give you all a bit of background about what we did learn from uh, the first cycle of the Rocket Relief Grant. Um, and again, you can find all this information on our website. So it was just there when I clicked on what we learned from cycle one. And I just want to share this with you because it had some bearing on um, some of the changes we made for cycle two from uh, cycle one. So cycle one um, <clears throat> started uh, with $120,000 and an additional $73,000 was raised, uh, giving us a total sum of, um, let me do my math, uh, $193,000. Uh, and we had a total of 594 artists applying for the uh, first cycle. So almost 600 artists applied for, for the grant in cycle one, and we awarded 143 grants, and we used, so therefore we used about $143,000. So that now leaves us with the fifty thousand uh, dollars for cycle two. Now the original um, one hundred twenty thousand was restricted to artistic disciplines, which is so when you see these two pie charts in front of you, uh, you might see a disproportion between all applicants who applied and the recipients um, who um, <coughs> uh, who received the grant. Um, most notably, you might notice the theatre artists, where we had 12% theatre artists apply and 30% uh, of the grants awarded went to uh, theatre artists. The only reason why that was is because we had um, a generous contribution from Theatre League of $40,000 that was restricted to theatre artists. So the difference is with cycle two, the $50,000 is all unrestricted funds. Um, and so it's not going to be influenced by artistic discipline, but on the risk factors that are impacting um, artists who are applying. The other notable change that uh, you'll see in cycle two um, <clears throat> is that we're using demographic uh, information in the selection process, which of course will remain anonymous and you do not have to actually uh, tell us either. So, just so you know. Um, but in cycle two, we are committed to um, awarding at least 60% of the grants to artists who self-identify as Black, Indigenous and or artists of colour. Um, and cycle one didn't factor race and ethnicity into the selection process. Um, however, what we did find is that 28% of all applicants did identify as BIPOC and 28% of the grants that went out also went to artists who identified as BIPOC. Um, so we do know, so I'm just scrolling down a little bit here, when we look at race um, and ethnicity in conjunction with risk factors, um, and, we, and we do know that BIPOC communities are uh, two to three times more likely of getting sick or dying from COVID and are at a greater risk due to uh, certain risk factors. And we also saw this when we did compare race and ethnicity with the risk factors in the rocket relief applications. So this graph that you see in front of you shows, for instance, that BIPOC um, applicants were almost 50% more likely to not have health insurance uh, compared with people who identified as white or Caucasian. Um, another striking difference you might see is um, is the uh, who doesn't have a financial safety net. Uh, so 78% of BIPOC artists did, didn't have a safety net uh, compared to 57% uh, of the 57% of Caucasian artists. Um, 
so there is a lot of information there. I'm going to stop sharing because it is, it, is, it is a lot. <laughs> I don't overwhelm you all. Um, but feel free to, to go on there and have a look and read it and, and take your time with that information. Um, but in, anyway, in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to move on and I'm going to let Margaret speak to uh, the, how we, um, uh, to the waiting system that we use with the lottery. Thank you. Um, so the um, rocket relief program is, is the selections are made using what is called a weighted lottery system. So there are elements of the system that are random and there are elements of the system um, that are um, weighted in favor of, in this case, um, applicants who demonstrate a greater number of risk factors. So um, with recognition that um, as the risk factors compile on, upon one another, um, individuals may more have uh, maybe experience a more se severe impact of COVID um, or the economic challenges related, we use this system that um, essentially would put a, an individual who has greater um, risk at greater likelihood of receiving the, um, the grant. So if, for example, we have an individual who demonstrates only one risk factor, they are still under consideration and when the um, when the selection is made, the selection is made randomly. However, those individuals who have far more risk, risk factors have far more chances to be uh, the individual selected. Um, our process was heavily informed on many levels by the National um, Artist Relief Grant, and I am dropping the link in now. It's something that uh, we would encourage any of you, if you see that you're eligible, to also apply for that grant. Um, Artist Relief is um, was primarily launched by United States artists, but um, heavily supported across the country, and really a fairly innovative model at that time. Um, so we interviewed some of the individuals who were spearheading. We aligned many of the risk factors that we identified um, alongside those that, that they had identified and, and followed their pro process very closely. One of the things that we did not do in our first round was, as Christine mentioned, take into consideration any of the race or ethnicity uh, data, which is part of why we provided all of our first round applicants an opportunity to resubmit because that is being taken into consideration this round. So um, as you are filling out the um, application, um, you might take that into consideration knowing that um, that section of the, the application is optional. Does anybody have questions about the weighted lottery system or um, our methodology? Awesome. Thanks so much, Margaret. Um, can I get Heather? Heather, do you want to share a little bit um, why Arts KC is involved um, and um, do you want to run through the actual application process? Certainly. Um, we're really honored to be part of this project. Um, uh, like Margaret was saying, this is a, a new form of grant making um, for everyone directly involved here. Um, and we're really glad to have had um, those external models to uh, build upon. Um, and we all really learned a lot in, in cycle one um, and, and got a lot more comfortable with it because um, as, as some of you listening may know, um, a lot of grant making is a lot more project based merit-based um, and, and emergency grants are just new um, for, for me as an individual and I think a lot of arts administrators, grant makers around the country. So um, uh, the, the grants, um, the applications that we received in cycle one 
were from people throughout our community. Um, having worked in the community for a few years, I recognized some people and of course I, I got to uh, learn about some new people as well. And the, there's some content that you include in the application that helps us verify that you are an artist and we're not evaluating it on a merit basis. Um, but I was really inspired by the, the quality of all of the art that was um, submitted. Um, we've got a really robust region um, of, of folks who, who dream big, who work hard toward their ambitions and who achieve on, um, on, on a really fantastic scale. Um, so I was definitely inspired to um, work with our ArtsKC board and uh, leaders uh, to try to make sure that we could fulfill more of um, the need in rocket relief. And that's part of why we're doing cycle two is, is simply because we saw a high degree of need and a great deal of um, artists who, who still needed it. We will still be making inspiration grants and I'll, I'll touch on that a little later. Uh, Christine, I think I think in the in our um, in our talk I, I'm going into the application next. Is that right? Oh, uh, you're on mute. Yes, yes, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to share my screen and walk you all through the application process. Um, so hang tight. So on the Rocket Relief Fund page, uh, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. All right. Um, on the Rocket Relief Fund page, of course, review all the information that is um, listed that uh, Christine and Margaret have presented so nicely. Um, the call details are also in a PDF uh, that you can download. Sometimes that's more con convenient. And there's a, a button there for apply now online. Uh, it takes you to callforentry.org. Go ahead and click on apply now. As it happens, I'm already logged in to callforentry.org. You do need to set up um, an account on cafe.org if you do not already have one. There's terms and conditions um, related to this that are listed here. And then you fill out an application. Um, I'm going to do this really roughly um, just to get us through it. But I'm taking you through it because there are some, um, there are some finicky things in the system that um, I wanted to I wanted to show to you before we're done. There's parts of the application that help us ascertain that you are eligible for the grant, uh, such as being one of the specific types of artists that that we already talked about, and also um, you confirm that you are not officially um, an employee or a board member of one of the partners of the grant. Um, you confirm that you can provide a W-9 and social security number or an individual taxpayer identification number if you're selected for a grant. So here's one of the sections that shows this, that you are an artist. Um, and um, actually, I'm an arts administrator, so I'm just going to put in my own organization's website. Um, if you don't have a website, you can give us a link to your CV or resume, um, which um, can be online. It could be a link to something in a Dropbox um, if that's where it lives. Um, it could also be a link to a public arts event um, that might be on a website or in an archive where you are listed as a participant, performer, exhibitor, um, or what have you. Um, so if any of those are acceptable. Um, if you do add a Dropbox or a link like that, then and it requires a password, just make sure to include the password for us. This is where you check some boxes um, related to the impact of the coronavirus um, on your life. I'm just going to click a few just for an example. The narrative is, is where you write about your experience. Um, 
I know that this is a very vulnerable time for many people, especially in a need-based grant. And, and we do keep your, your information uh, confidential within the, the process. Um, but this is where if say something that's going on in your life that's really impacting you isn't one of these checkboxes, this is where you can tell us about it. Um, there's some more checkboxes here that have to do with your additional financial risk, usually longer term circumstances, such as not having health insurance. This is where, where you inform us about that. So I'm just gonna put an X here, but, but this narrative section is important so that we understand um, uh, what's going on for you. Um, there's more questions here, which are um, optional. Um, if, if you are one of the people who um, is, uh, if, if you are um, a black or African-American, uh, Latino, Latina, Latinx, um, or the other groups that are uh, that we talked about earlier as being an additional factor in this cycle of the grant, um, then um, you, you can check that here as well. Um, more information about you, they, these diversity areas are um, optional for you, so you don't have to check them to uh, complete it. Your age, uh, some of these other things. Um, really only the, the race of, and then ethnicity part it, um, is anything that factors into the grant um, in those particular cases. Um, you can sign up to receive more information from one of the organizations involved um, or about specific coronavirus specific resources. So um, if you'd like to share some testimony that we can use publicly in order for it to help us raise additional funds, um, you can put that here. Um, and, and this is the only area that, um, that we wouldn't hold uh, strictly confidential um, uh, right here. So the work samples, this is part of why we're, we're looking at this. Um, Callforentry.org has a portfolio system. And so whenever I'm applying for a grant, I make sure I have a folder with whatever I need already ready in it. And I made these test cat images for this um, in our previous round. So, yep, uh, that's what we get today. So in order to add things to an application in this system, you need to put it in your portfolio. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Um, this is part of where you can um, include content to help it show us that you are a practicing artist. Um, but if the link that you provided sufficiently covers that, um, then uh, that is fine too. Um, this, these other areas like about the size of the work, um, et cetera, uh, don't, don't worry about that. But I've already got these files ready here and I can simply select them. You do have to add them one at a time, which is a little tedious. But it's, it's good to have a little perspective on this um, before you start, because you, you just need a little extra time if you don't already have things in your portfolio. To do a second thing, you have to go to this actions button and then start again on the next one. Uh, here's test cat two, um, and so on and so on. So really don't sweat these, these fields about your attachments. You can also attach um, video and music files. Um, and there's, there's information in the system about how to do that here. Um, so I'm just gonna get through that really quick. And I think I've got three, cat. this is my third cat, right? So after you have loaded some things into your uh, portfolio, you have to go back to your application, go to my entries, sorry, go to my profile, apply to calls, sorry. They make the navigation a little tricky. Wow. Sorry about this, guys. Um, uh, forgive me, it, I've kind of lost where the application I began is. I thought it was 
going to save it. All right, this, this is good. Why uh, this is why we're doing this. Um, okay, so it is starting to detect things in my portfolio, but it lost the things I wrote in the fields above, uh, which is pretty frustrating. So this save button is pretty important if you're going through the system for the first time, um, especially if you put some extra effort into your narrative field, um, uh, which is fine. And I, I know that it can be very vulnerable. Uh, just in case this kind of thing happens, I recommend writing things in a Word document or maybe just in an email to yourself so that the, the text is saved elsewhere. Uh, anyhow, to add things from your portfolio to an application, Things in your portfolio will appear down here and you click them um, and, and then save it. And of course this won't save because I need to re-add all of that stuff. Um, but after you've saved and submitted it, um, um, and you have to put in at least five things um, in order to get through this, it's just a system requirement, uh, then you can save and submit your application. Um, you should get a confirmation email from the system about it. Um, and we will be making the first um, lottery poll on it uh, with um, and be, uh, sorry, we, we will be making the first lottery poll and we'll be notifying people in, in late September. Um, any questions about the system that I can try to answer? Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, it's just a little messy. Um, I've made three or four different ones with different logins now. So um, uh, part of why I had those, those test cats where it's all the exact same cat is in part to illustrate that um, uh, just to get through that system requirement, um, if, you're, if the website link or other documentation you have about yourself as an artist is sufficient, then you can just get through that system requirement with say a headshot or a picture of anything and just just attach the same thing several times, just give it different names, and that'll get you through the system. I mean, and we've found that that is um, a, a nice point to make, particularly if you're coming from like a performing artist background where, um, yeah. you know, it's one thing if you're a visual artist, you've got plenty of work that you could probably put up there, but if not, you know, mm -hmm. if you're performing, you could always put something where you're there backstage, on the stage, but yeah, headshots, totally fine. Yeah, they're, they're fine. Uh, uh, video and audio files are great. Um, if, if you're an artist who works in a, a variety of mediums and, and one of them fits one of our areas really well, then I would highlight the area that fits our grant um, and, and your activity in it from the last two years. Heather, am I correct that you could make your entire portfolio before you fill out your application? You can, yes. And that's what I highly recommend that you do that before you go into the application form. So if you set up your portfolio first and then, and then apply. One other advantage is that if you're someone who might apply for something else through CAFE, it retains the portfolio and then you can just grab those images. Or if you've applied to CAFE in the past, um, you don't have to upload new images for this. You can just draw on what is already in your image bank. Well, I know that um, applying for grants means navigating a lot of different systems um, and uh, it can be difficult. So if you're having any trouble with the system, you can email us and we'll try to help you as soon as we can. Um, we had a group email set up for the last cycle. Um, can anybody remind me of that? Oh, was it the Rocket Relief at yeah. Charlotte Street? Yep. So yeah, please email, yeah, rocketrelief at charlottestreet.org. Um, uh, you can email any of us individually as well. Um, okay, thanks. Thanks so much, Heather. Um, okay, so I just want to open it up to any uh, questions um, anyone has. No? Yes? I guess confirm that then the artwork in the portfolio section does not affect your selection. No, it, it, it doesn't. Um, the main thing is, you know, you, you're just showing us that you um, are, are a practicing artist and have been for the last two years. 
may I elaborate really briefly on that? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that is important in the work that you share is that it demonstrates uh, a, a personal creative practice. So we have encountered instances um, where the work that was submitted uh, perhaps um, appeared to be work for hire or closely aligned with um, like outside of somebody's personal generative practice. So finding work that really reflects um, your ideas as an artist uh, taking their own form will be important um, if anybody else would let, could elaborate or if you have questions on what that means um i would say feel free to ask them right now but also feel totally comfortable to to email us um examples and i'm sure that the um that christine would be willing to say like yes or you know, it might be helpful if you show a couple of examples like blank. And it's very rare that we've encountered these instances. But for example, if your work was like a recreation of a Pepsi logo made for Pepsi, we might want to see a couple of examples that show something um, that demonstrates your own creative impetus. I had a quick question. Is there a specific amount of time for videos or audio when submitting? Question. Um, is it, I think, I don't know. I'm not really sure with the cafe system. Heather, do you know? I, mean, I would say keep it down to five minutes. Uh, yeah, I, typically yeah. with platforms, I think it's three minutes, but yeah. I just double check. Yeah. It, most systems have a file size requirement and, mm. and that'll limit you in some way or another. Um, I really enjoyed seeing some of the music and video um, uh, uh, things that we, we, we got to see um, in the last round. Um, uh, so uh, definitely feel free to include them if you like, um, or, or if, that, if that is something that um, helps uh, fulfill your eligibility for your question. We probably won't watch anything longer than three or five minutes. Um, yeah. now, I would say the system would tell you whether or not um, be uploaded as well but also when you go in there is some information on cafe that tells you what the requirements and restrictions are around um, your uploads okay yes yeah for both images and and uh, moving files mm -hmm. and if something doesn't fit that could also be in a link that you provide um, if you want to direct attention to to something that's beyond the link okay. that's okay. Upload. yeah thank you no worries. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Any anyone any any final questions? I, I just wanted to be sure that the question about I uh, I see it's Tom. Did your question actually do do you feel it was answered? Did you feel okay? Okay. Um and then I also just wanted to thank all of you for being artists and how much, how important that is right now and how moving it is for us to just be able to at least offer some of this. And we wish we could offer a lot more, but thank you for the work that you do. Um. Okay. Before we go, is there anything um, any of you would like to share, like anything that's coming up? Um, that you'd like us to know about. All right, uh, Heather, would you would, do you want to tell us a bit more um, about things that are coming up at Arts KC that might be helpful or any additional resources? Certainly, um, our grant making is part of um, uh, the support part of Arts KC. Um, we also have promote and advocate. Um, you can join the artist directory on artskcgo.com to promote yourself and your activities. Um, you can also find other artists and organizations to collaborate with. Um, it, it is largely an event listing website, but it's, it's meant to connect people in a bunch of different ways. Um, also in our advocacy work, we, we follow legislation that impacts the creative sectors uh, year round. And we have 
we have a, um, an advocate training session coming up and I'm going to put information about that in the chat um, in just a moment. Um, uh, Thanks, Heather. Let's get yeah. right now. Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Um, Elizabeth, is there anything from the Spencer Museum of Art? Uh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that um, we aren't we aren't haven't reopened uh, our galleries yet to the public. <laughs> We're still in the process of of figuring that out. Um, at, but if you want to stay connected with us in the meantime, in all of our virtual happenings, and then also to stay updated on how our reopening is progressing, then I'm going to drop a link in the chat for signing up for our e-news, which comes out every other week. And um, certainly following our, we're on various social media channels and our main webpage has updates as well. So we're trying hard to reopen as soon as we can, but being safe about it. So. Uh, Stay tuned. We hope to be able to host those of you who venture to Lawrence in person sooner than later. Thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, well, I just want to um, thank you all and I want to thank our partners um, and everything that you guys have um, the support and the team that um, I've been able to work with. But also I want to thank all you guys and artists who've, who've come and um, spent your evening with us tonight and uh, if there's anything else that any of us could do please please reach out to us um, and yeah best of luck thank you have a good night